हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर सर वी आर स्टार्टिंग हाँ गुड मॉर्निंग आई पुलकित नायक थैंक यू टू ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू फॉर बीइंग हियर विथ अस फॉर द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ डे फाइव ऑफ द फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑन इमर्जिंग ट्रेंड्स इन थर्मल इंजीनियरिंग ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग श्री शंकराचार्य इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ प्रोफेशनल मैनेजमेंट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी रायपुर द फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम on emerging trends in thermal engineering intends to weave a series of informative sessions on the novel findings in the field of thermal engineering i would like to invite our last dignitary of fdb program dr srikant verma dr srikant verma dr srikant verma has obtained his doctorate of philosophy in heat power engineering from iit raipur dr verma is a senior post doctorate fellow Institute of for plasma research at the Department of Atom- Atomic Energy with 26 citations and 90- 19 articles published in national and international journals Dr Verma's research work include broad disciplines such as CFD cryogenesis species transport modeling turbulence and natural con- convective heat transfer so now without losing a single minute sir we beseech you to join us on the screen and i would like to request our technical team to share ppt uh Uh, good morning to everyone everyone sorry for uh, some morning, delay sir. some technical issue uh, can i start hello sure so you can start sir okay so today i will talk about uh, the rheological behavior of hydrogen exclusion uh, there are different uh, types of cryogens Uh, we are using in uh, in cryogenic system such as uh, hydrogen neon uh, deuterium so hydrogen is one of the uh, most critical uh, fluid which is uh, we are mostly using uh, production of uh, hydrogen pellet and this pellet is uh, uh, we are using for Filling of recent tokamak and recent SST1 uh, reactor. Basically, a tokamak is a dome-shaped fusion uh, reactor which produces uh, artificial energy, such as like a uh, similar to the uh, energy which is produced by a sun. And uh, uh, this uh, hydrogen. So we are extruded with the help of different uh, techniques, and uh, this hydrogen is uh, belong to the non-Newtonian fluid, and uh, so this is the content of my presentations. We will discuss one by one by one. We start some introduction and what are the challenge challenges associated with the molding of uh, this non-Newtonian fluid. and uh, we will discuss in this uh, introduction and changing section we will discuss about the uh, different types of uh, injector systems and what are the advantage disadvantage advantages in objective of this uh, present talk and this objective is fulfilled by some assumptions we are uh, considering in simulation then what are the dimensions then bonding conditions computation domain and of course calculation result and uh, conclusion sections as like this next so <clears throat> this extrusion technology is uh, came from uh, this polymer research and this extrusion technology is widely used in uh, pharmaceutical industries food processing industries polymer industries 
and this is already very old technology and this technology uh, presently we are using for the production of hydrogen ice in the form of pellets we can use the different uh, uh, different uh, uh, pellet solid uh, this uh, ice it depend upon the requirement and we can also produce a deuterium pellet neon tritium pellet and of course the hydrogen pellet so uh, from the plastic extrusion technology we already know uh, how to produce this, how to uh, extrude uh, with the help of this uh, different extruder te techniques <coughs> and uh, so with the help of this uh, uh, past technologies which is used in uh, polymer industries we know how to develop this uh, extruder and this uh, a development of this extruder technology we use uh, we, we need a lot of empirical modification you know, you know and uh, so that we can uh, apply this concept for the production of this hydrogen pellet so this empirical empirical modification we need a, a large amount of state data so that we can get some optimum design if you focus on this uh, extra design for our fusion research there are two main objectives the first and very very important um, objective is to minimize this crystal dissipation rate because this viscous dissipation rate uh, it, it decided if this uh, viscous dissipation rate is very high up to some some particular uh, limit then it will affect the size of the uh, cry cooler and motors because in standard some uh, because the cost of this cry cooler is very high in india and we we are importing this cry coolers from mainly canada and japan it has very really huge cost so suppose uh, this is a uh, 20 watt heat dissipation from the extruder system so we need a two cry cooler we need two cry coolers 10 10 watt each so our objective is to this minimize this crystal dissipation rate and the second objective is uh, the volume of the extruder has to be minimum uh, because it will affect the radioactive tritium inventory next slide please next slide <coughs> so Uh, if you classify this uh, extruder system uh, based on the screw uh, we can uh, uh, we can divide this extruder such as a single screw extruder uh, two screw extruder and this multiple screw extruder uh, in in case of single screw extruder the one screw uh, rotate inside this barrel so and this uh, and based on this geometrical uh, condition of the barrel we can again sub classify as a smooth barrel and uh, groove or pin barrel as shown in figure similarly in, in case of two screw extruder uh, the two screws which may be a uh, uh, intermeshing position or non intermeshing position at the same time it it may be rotating a uh, uh, same direction as for rotating as a rotating position and maybe in a rotating opposite direction such as in like in counter rotating one rot is to rotate in a clockwise direction and other screw second screw it rotate within an anti clockwise direction or we can say that 
फर्स्ट वन इज लेफ्ट हैंड स्क्रू एंड सेकंड इज राइट हैंड स्क्रू और वी कैन आल्सो वी कैन आल्सो कॉल्ड एज वन इज अ ड्राइविंग स्क्रू अदर इज ड्रिवन स्क्रू सो इफ द टू स्क्रू आर रोटेट इन द सेम डायरेक्शन वी कैन कॉल्ड एज अ को रोटेटिंग इंटर को रोटेटिंग टू इज लेफ्ट टू द एंड ऑफ कोर्स इफ इट इज इन इंटर मैशिंग पोजिशन we can we can call as a core rotating intermeshing screw and if this screw are rotating in a positive direction we can call as a counter rotating screw screw to the and uh, and this the intermeshing angle which is defined by this overlap overlap intermeshing position uh, amount of this intermeshing Uh, between the two screws defined by this overlap angle similarly if there are uh, more than two screw we can call as a multiple twin screw so in multiple uh, uh, screw extruder uh, one uh, rotating center shaft is there and around this uh, shaft the uh, Screw is there more than two screw. So the shaft is rotating, and screw are in, in same position. In stationary conditions, similarly, this static center shaft. The shaft is in static position, and the screws, which are in <laughs> circumference of the on the uh, shaft, the screws are rotated. next slide please so if you uh, focus if you will if you focus on this uh, screw type extruder system we can uh, define this as single screw extruder and two screw extruder and if you if you make some arrangement like a piston cylinder arrangement uh, we can produce a Uh, hydrogen ice, or uh, we can we can call we can say that a hydrogen ice uh, with the help of one single batch, single stroke, with the help of this piston cylinder arrangement, then this is called as a batch extruder. So in this, uh, so we can call the uh, divine is uh, solid one extruder, uh, batch extruder, single stroke extruder, and single stroke extruder. So in this. Uh, <coughs> Body fine extruder, and we can classify supply some uh, divide. We can divide this in uh, liquefied sections, solidified section, and uh, and driver section. So in case of this, so in this three, this piston cylinder is our driver mechanism. In case of batch extruder, uh, in case of single screw, this single screw, in case of the single screw extruder. This single screw is a our driver mechanism. Similarly, this two twin screw is our driver mechanism for the case of twin screw extruder system. <coughs> so, next slide, please. So, if you compare this uh, single screw extruder uh, and twin screw extruder based on different properties. so one of the uh, important property is a main energy supply system in case of the single screw the viscous dissipation is a, a mode of energy supply uh, but in case of twin screw uh, we are giving some heat supply to the barrel so that it maintain the strength of this uh, um iron ice in the in the uh, solid fine section similarly if you compare this uh, uh, based on this transport mechanism so in case of single screw the friction between this metal and wood material is a mode of transport mechanism uh, but in case of thin screw this is a positive displacement so basically this thin screw is a 
was not only in theoretically it is um, of course in experimentally it is a, a positive displacement pump it means the throughput or discharge we can say increases as the uh, screw rotation speed increases you see how uh, the throughput increases in incoming slide <coughs> similarly uh, if you compare this uh, operating rpm so in single screw uh, we can go up to 150 rpm it works on the high rpm but in case of this twin screw and uh, because uh, there is some gear turn gear turn mechanism is there and uh, which between the this uh, driving and driven screw so we cannot uh, operate this very high rpm so there is some limit is there so uh, we are operating this twin uh, screw in a little low rpm if you compare uh, based on velocity profile in case of single and twin screw so uh, velocity profile is easy to describe in single screw to the system uh, but if you go on this uh, twin screw to the system this uh, velocity profile is more complex it is very difficult to uh, describe in experimentally because some this uh, <coughs> positive flow behavior and this power flow behavior is there next slide please now if you uh, if you use this uh, extruder system in the vision research of course for the feeling of different tokamak or uh, research reactor so the there are different injection criteria is there uh, based on different uh, types of this injection system pilot injection system and this so there are different injection criteria this one of the injection criteria is the uh, size of pilot then injection frequency injection timing Uh, then the flow rate of the hydrogen or flow rate of the different gradients in the rate and its reliability uh, here we are defining this reliability uh, based on the number of delivered pilots you have got the number of required pilots and this pilot velocity so pilot is a, uh, nothing but it is a, a really small millimeter size and uh, in cylindrical shape it is used for uh, filling fusion tokamak or reactors so if you uh, compare the different types of uh, uh, different types of injector uh, like a pipe gun a two stage gun piston type and single and two uh, twin stage to the size of the pilot is in case of pipe gun is 0.5 to 12 mm but in case of piston type it is uh, in the range of 1 to 4 mm and single screw it is less than 3 mm and twin screw it is also in less than 3 mm uh, and if you compare based on flow rate of the hydrogen so in twin screw It depends on the size and the density, and of course, it is better than single screw. And it is really if you compare this based on reliability. And so, in case of pipe gun, uh, till now we have got almost uh, more than ninety four percent reliability in case of pipe gun and two stage. Then it is almost on more than ninety eight percent. But in twin screw, we cannot say what is the what is the reliability because it is in under development stage or in fusion reactor research. Next slide, please. 
So, now we can define uh, what is single square tudor. Uh, basically, a uh, harmonized point of view, if you, if you define uh, single square tudor uh, based on the dispersion of uh, energy, or we can call it law of congestion of energy, and heat and work are mutually convertible. So, here we are supplying some input power to the motor uh, which will rotate this to the screw and because uh, we are supplying some input power in the form of torque into omega so this torque into omega is input power which is a combination of this uh, fluid power plus viscous dissipation so fluid power we can define as a uh, pressure develop because it is a positive displacement pump, so pressure develop delta P into Q. We have to go and plus discuss dissipation and this is the dissipation, which is a this is a critical parameter. Uh, if we are try to cancel, uh, try to predict how much uh, how much will be the discuss dissipation. From the system, so uh, basically, it is a, a device or you know, system that integrates the function of pump, mixer, heat exchanger, and molder. Uh, basically, it is a, a positive displacement pump uh, with the throughput increases as the screw distance increases. And the first extruder has been used for uh, manufacturing of this thing with lead pipe, which is uh, which was produced by this hand operated uh, piston press. And the name of this screw extruder uh, came from this cable in uh, as the literature suggests. So uh, you can see this in, di in this diagram the two screw uh, driving screw. First one is the uh, Primary screw and secondary is driven screw, which are in mesh position and intermeshing position, and which are rotated in contrapping position. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide. So, if you focus on uh, uh, the system diagram for a steady state in a polymer to square scooter, so this is two geometry. Uh, uh, we can select the uh, uh, different school geometry and based on our, uh, our requirement. So, this is two geometry. And uh, will affect the pressure gradient through the extrusion system. So, this pressure gradient will produce and uh, require for this positive displacement action. So, this uh, pressure gradient will affect by the screw geometry, then leak rate, and this volumetric displacement. And of course, the fluid property, fruit, the rheological behavior of this fluid. <laughs> Similarly, uh, this mixing in a in the system will affect by the leakage rate because the two screws are in intermeshing positions, and because some uh, there are different gap is there between the two screws which are in intermeshing position. So there are different leakages there. We will see in coming slide. Petrad and leakage, cylinder leakage, slide gap leakage. So this leak rate affects the actual throughput. Vertically, uh, in vertical, if you say, so this leak rate, leak rate will not affect the throughput. But if you, if you calculate this actual uh, throughput. At the outlet of the system, 
सो क्यू एक्चुअल माइनस क्यू क्रिटिकल माइनस टू ली समीकेज रेट सो अफकोर्स एक्चुअल थ्रूपुट और डिस्चार्ज इन टर्म्स ऑफ एम एम पी पर सेकेंड विल बी लेस इन दिस प्रोटिकल थ्रूपुट एंड दिस इज अ बेसिक एंड a basic understanding of this intermeshing uh, contouring in this square tudor so in this uh, and that can see that one c chamber is there so in uh, this c chamber you can define uh, the closed volume form along one pitch the closed volume form along one pitch is called as a c chamber so if there are uh, 12 Apply uh, to this two, so we will we will get twelve C chambers. So one one is for the twelve uh, twelve C chamber and second second is two twelve twelve C chambers. So total if you say the total volume of C chambers is it will be the twenty four. So this uh, if you say the understanding point of view, the left hand is two and right hand is two, which is it may be a square set profile. Data from our requirement, which are in rotated in counterclockwise direction in a barrel, which which may be a air-shaped barrel, and uh, at the bottom of this actual system, uh, nozzle is attached, and there is a extruded is formed in the rod, and depending upon the uh, size and uh, length of the this, uh, Uh, ice, hardened ice. We can cut by cutter mechanism as per the requirement. After that, it's not just so. As I said, the stability of this uh, tennis screw um, extruder system uh, comes from this C uh, chamber which, uh, between these threads. Next slide, please. so how to use uh, this uh, how to correlate and uh, of different uh, this uh, parameters what are different parameters such as this uh, different leakage is there tetrahedral the leakage then calendar leakage slide gap leakage so this uh, some of this leakage is we can call is a total leakage so this uh, and of course this uh, particle throughput is affected affected by this uh, some of this leakages if the leakage rate is high so if the leakage rate is high so we get this uh, actual throughput it will be less because this amount of this leakage we have to subtract from this uh, protocol Uh, leakage. Leakage means there is a no leakage. Leakage is there, and the this uh, particle throughput, and uh, uh, there is a link between this uh, screw geometry, tetrahedral leakage, uh, and total leakage, and of course, and the particle throughput. So, if, uh, from geometrical point of view, this. Uh, Leak rate. Uh, if you consider, if you focus on this data and leak, this data and leak is affected by these different geometrical parameters, these two such as uh, chamber height. This is heavily denoted with the help of import capital H. Then the viscosity of the fluid. Then flight angle. <coughs> Similarly. Uh, this uh, theoretical throughput and uh, will affected by the screw rotation, which is generated by capital N, and small n. This is the start of the screw. So, if you uh, calculate this theoretical throughput, we can uh, mathematically express 
flow into two m two times uh, start of the school which is m into n which is the school lesson rpm n in, into this is c chamber volume vc so two m into n into e is the my is my protocol throughput so the rotation speed and this start of the screw this two factor will affect the vertical throughput and in case of this axial die pressure gradient it is affected by the length of the die and will let an outlet the diameter of the and uh, die similarly uh, this uh, a slide cap which is uh, affected by uh, this slight uh, uh, leakage which is a little affected by this slide cap which is the gap between this uh, inside diameter of the barrel and the uh, uh, root slide of this screw so this slight leakage is affected by this slide cap delta and two radius r and of course this slide angle so this three factor will affect is the slide cap leakage next slide is next slide next slide is so in what are the flow components in case of single screw extruder so <clears throat> there are three main factors for flow component um, first when you extrude the gradient to the to the extruder first one is the drag flow uh, second one is the pressure flow and this leakage flow this is Uh, this is drag flow, which is caused by this contact effect between the material barrel and screw surface. In this is uh, a pressure flow, which is a, uh, and this pressure flow leads to the pressure that is built up at the end of the extruder. So the direction of this flow uh, is opposite to this drag flow. So uh, from the inlet to the outlet side of this tube, uh, this uh, dragging action of the uh, fluid inside this inside the uh, barrel, the fluid is moving from inlet to outlet due to this dragging action. And third one is the uh, leakage flow. Uh, which is present in the uh, between the gaps between the barrel and slide of the screws. Next slide. So, uh, in thermal thermodynamics analysis of this thermal uh, slide cooler, we focus on this kind of. Condition for the analysis of this turbine uh, space cooler, this heat transfer and this fluid flow. These two, these combined factors, the heat transfer and fluid flow, and it is very complicated mm -hmm. and very challenging, challenging part, exciting condition uh, because uh, it's already, it's already discussed. The velocity for high in case of this thing is very really complicated. If you compare this uh, in case of single and other types of the system, so uh, one of the challenging part to how to model this heat uh, transfer and fluid flow behavior in the system system. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the basic uh, configuration of the any type of injection system. So in this diagram, we can see that this uh, 
पैलेट सीजिंग जोन एंड दिस पैलेट कटिंग पंचिंग एंड एक्सलेशन जोन दिस टू दिस टू फैक्टर विल डिसाइड द टाइप ऑफ दी इंजेक्टर सिस्टम पैलेट सिस्टम एंड दिस पैलेट सीजिंग जोन Which is the best desire for this? Uh, how to? Uh, how uh, in this? In which way we are? Uh, in which way we are maintaining this uh, uh, temperature, or we can say the strength of this uh, pellet? So, for cooling purpose, we can use a liquid helium, or we can use a uh, dry cooler. Which will produce the uh, four Kelvin system from the uh, particular uh, first stage and second stage. So there are different stages. If they are in particular, uh, the first stage it may, it may may be a seventy seven Kelvin, and then the second stage it will be will be a uh, bit four Kelvin or ten Kelvin, depending on the type of the particular we are using. So the first. Uh, In the collecting system, the first is the fuel storage and supply system. So it will decide. It will decide by the uh, which type of pellet uh, we want to extrude to the extrusion system. Whether it is a deuterium, it is usually hydrogen or tritium. And uh, And this pellet diagnostic system, this pellet diagnostic system compromise of this high speed camera, and microwave cavity, the shadowgraphs and light mechanism. So the purpose of this induction system is to create a continuous supply of the hidden extrusion with the help of this ribbon, ribbon like element, without any breakage. And this PA system is for continuous uh, supply of pellet of hydrogen isotopes at various speed, uh, which uh, which will fulfill fulfill the need of this uh, a fusion of micro reactors. So and the amount of uh, this uh, discharge or throughput will decide by the screw rotation speed. A different speed, such as five uh, to ten rpm. So if the speed increases, this uh, throughput increases. Next slide, please. And this is a, uh, a prototype of Martin Spector system, which is developed here. Operation National Laboratory USA. So any type of this uh, twin spectral system, uh, there are different uh, heat uh, exchanges here, such as uh, precooler, two precooler is a liquid fire and and solid fire. So is solid fire we can call it a twin spectral. Liquefier. There are two liquefiers there. Basically, these are all heat exchangers. Two uh, two liquefier. So, and from this diagram, you can see that the screws which are inside the barrel, uh, which is rotated to this DC motor, and this L N two means the liquid and nitrogen. In due to this is a deuterium so in this uh, this arrangement is for uh, deuterium pellet production. That's why we are using deuterium at inlet. So the deuterium is uh, enter at the top of the system, say due to inlet as a gas, and because uh, there are different heat uh, exchangers there, so this uh, gas. Gas state, due to the gas state, uh, convert uh, 
uh, in the uh, liquid stage uh, via different heat exchanger. So gas stage and liquid stage, and then, then after this liquid stage, it's converted into the uh, solid state. So gas, liquid, and this is a uh, solid state to different uh, heat exchanger. So this is, uh, of course, this uh, deuterium uh, enters at some particular temperature and at high temperature, 300 Kelvin, let us say, 300 to 4 Kelvin. So this uh, uh, different stage of cooling, we can call it the cool down temperature. You will see in coming slide. And uh, this uh, Chromite GD37 is the types of capsular we are using, uh, which uh, uh, maintain the temperature uh, around the circumference of this uh, barrel of the explorer, as on the GD37. So it uh, preserve or maintain the strength of this uh, hydrogenic ice. If you not, if you uh, you not supply with the bachelor's cooling in the circumstance because uh, this, uh, most of these two schools uh, they will produce uh, a sharing action to share it is there at different different RPM and this is the dissipation here so it will affect it it will produce to, to absorb this heat we are using this bachelor's so there's a strength uh, of this deuterium uh, uh, pellet we maintain throughout the explosion. <coughs> and this, uh, <coughs> this vacuum vessel is there. And this, uh, in, so in current conditions, this vacuum is very, very important parameters. And this vacuum be in the in the condition, we are maintaining 10 to the power minus 5 millibar, at least 10 to the power minus 5 millibar, so that we can pass the uh, uh, system in the condition. If you would get more than 10 to the power 5 millibar, let us say 10 to the power minus 7 or 10 to the power minus 8 millibar, so this is uh, good for us as a graduate uh, engineer. So, <coughs> basically, this uh, uh, Vacuum basin uh, this vacuum basin maintain uh, this uh, uh, pressure of this level. Okay. Of course, this vacuum is a different uh, story, this different subject in Tarani. And uh, types of this different uh, level of pressure, we can define different types of vacuum. Making so low level vacuum, medium level vacuum, high level or more than if you get ten to power more than ten to power five and minus eight millibar pressure, which is called an ultra ultra high vacuum ten to power minus eight or more more than ten to power minus eight millibar. So this vacuum is very very important in carrying conditions on negative pressure. Uh, so that we can get the temperature, thermal temperature. Uh, so to to maintain this uh, uh, vacuum, uh, we have to go for different uh, leak test, such as the super test is there, and then uh, helium leak. Uh, we are using uh, helium leak detector to find out the leakage in the dynamic system. Uh, so in this helium detector, uh, with the help of uh, uh, helium gun, we are producing, we are artificially inject uh, this helium uh, at different different uh, connections to different flange, uh, KF flange, uh, at different joining between the poles, and different gasket o-ring is there. So we are first we are in every crashing system. So leak leak rate 
digestion of liquid is very, very important. So, different test is there, William Ligator, therefore, in William Ligator, we can tell that this leakage. And uh, at the end of this epidermis, someone on mucose is there, torso mucose is there, and the help of this mucose, we can visualize, we can see the uh, size and shape of this palate. And this copper barrel, which is made of OFST type of uh, copper, oxygen free high uh, thermal conductivity copper, oxygen free high conductivity copper barrel. And uh, in Canada, we are using different types of things, beyond like epigon grease, uh, etc. Next slide, please. So this is a overview, overview of this prototype after the system. So in this system, we can see that this is our uh, one cubic shape box. It is a extruder cross state, and uh, the extruder we can see that. At the end of this restoration, this module is attached. It produces the different shape of the apparatus as per well requirement. And then we are using this turbo molecular form in short form can call as EMP turbo molecular form, uh, which is. There are two types of uh, basically in cardiac system. We are using two types of uh, pumping mechanism, pumping system. Uh, uh, for any system, uh, which is called a turbo molecular pump, and the first one is a rotary pump. So, this turbo molecular pump, which uh, produces a pumping effect at molecular level, and uh, the first one, which is called a rotary pump. This is first, uh, yeah, but we have to use this uh, pump for uh, this uh, baking. And then uh, first we start with the uh, uh, rotary pump. Uh, then up to certain level, when, when we start this turbo motor pump. And uh, so first, uh, this is uh, the one. This is called liquefaction of gases, and second one, one this is first, they are liquid to be solid as fabulous to be there for this fabulous to Next like this. Next like this. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, uh, and this is a basic uh, cold down step for hydrogen. So, here the cool down means uh, cool down means to get this uh, solid phase from this gaseous phase with the help of different uh, type of heat changes, which is incorporated in the astrogal system. <coughs> so, first we say Allen 2 pre-cooler. The two pre-cooler is here. Pre-cooler 1 and pre-cooler 2. Uh, 30, 300 Kelvin pre-cooler and 40K pre-cooler. So, first pre-cooler uh, which pull the, the liquid nitrogen from 300 to 80 Kelvin. And uh, Second one is this uh, 
second one is uh, 300 to uh, 80 kelvin to 40 kelvin the gaseous phase so the uh, first nuclear the hydrogen will be free cool from gases state one 300 kelvin to 80 kelvin they liquefied uh, by cooling down to 20 kelvin using gm crackers and uh, then second one is the uh, second nuclear which is 80 kelvin to 40 kelvin it has got a second uh, heat exchanger and third one is the uh, uh, 40 kelvin to 20 kelvin liquid phase and of course the final stage is the uh, 20 kelvin to 10 kelvin so this is about the cool down stage with help of this different uh, heat exchanger and next slide please next slide please so <clears throat> to focus on this uh, different uh, shear areas location of shear area in the system the first uh, most important uh, and of course we can call as a critical part in the intermeshing region and the uh, second one is a shear area is a shear ray screw which is denoted by symbol 2 third one is screw flight which is denoted by symbol 3 on the diagram and fourth one is a barrel wall <coughs> so if you go on this uh, uh, parametric study the first uh, parameter is the number of the chambers second one is the space between this uh, barrel wall and the fly third one is the space uh, between this uh, screw root circuit and barrel wall the screw circuit and barrel wall this is called as a fly gap then the variation of flight angle changing its length of the screw and of and the screw rotation speed So this is the, these are all the parameters. These are function of the geometry. Change this one parameter, the output will be changed accordingly. Uh, next slide, please. So if you go on this uh, uh, summary of this parametric analysis. Uh, So there are different parameters which uh, were discussed in the uh, previous slide. So if you change this uh, a number of three chambers, so depending upon this uh, number of three chambers, and uh, the pressure the uh, pressure built up will change. So we we can perform this the study on this uh, less number of three chambers because. Uh, the pressure build up we found that from the uh, results the pressure build up in the channel is linear <laughs> so now uh, based on this uh, 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 pressure build up profile we can predict the behavior of system for more than more number of chambers but at the same time <laughs> as the number of c chambers increases the computation effort would be increases so so we have to decide uh, optimum number of c chambers for the for the study keeping in mind uh, the our, our computational effort and computational time <laughs> similarly uh, this uh, the effect of this is uh, space between the barrel wall and the flight on the local shear rate so the the space between this uh, barrel and flight or we can call it as a flight gap the distance between the inner side of the barrel <coughs> diameter and this flight will affect the local shear rate 
and then so local share is higher in this areas and therefore this non nutrient uh, viscosity model based on this uh, share rate should be used in cfd simulations similarly the effect of this space uh, between the screw uh, root surface and barrel wall um, this will affect the uh, velocity component in jet direction is to the positive flow behavior next slide please another important uh, uh, findings uh, based on parameters of effect of throughput on total input power so if you change the mass flow rate in terms of kg per second or um, or in, it will affect the total input power so total input power decreases somewhat with the, this enhancement of this uh, throughput <coughs> similarly mm, the effect of this change of clearance gap on pumping capability so the pumping capability uh, uh, reduces significantly uh, with increase in this uh, clearance gap next slide please <coughs> so uh, this is the uh, characteristic curve of the extruder system and die system and this uh, graph we can see that the two types of study first one is a uh, analytical study and cfd study so first uh, result based on uh, analytical investigation or uh, second is uh, uh, observation based on cfd so this is a, this is called as a uh, characteristic curve uh, for the extruder die system so in this diagram you can see that as the throughput increases throughput increases the pressure development uh, reduces in case of a single square extruder yeah, sorry in case of uh, this two square extruder system and if you focus on this single square extruder uh, this uh, as the throughput increases the pressure uh, drop in the die increases <laughs> so uh, uh, if you see this diagram uh, the analytical investigation and cfd investigation is almost uh, uh, the trend is almost same but uh, first one uh, is based on this uh, nutrient investigation and second one is, is based on this uh, non nutrient behavior so here uh, the intersection of this type catalyst curve and this uh, is true uh, extruder catalyst curve is called is uh, called is as our operating point so if you change this geometry or if you change this parameter this operating point will shifted to left hand side or right hand side so here that this is the result for inlet diameter of 5 mm and outlet diameter is 3 mm and dial length is 10 mm so this uh, next slide please so what are the challenges associated with modeling of this uh, tennis screw extruder system at cryogenic conditions so that is a rheological behavior how to incorporate this uh, rheological behavior of this uh, different cryogens doing for for the simulation is one of the important challenging part now second one is the phase change creates another problem because we have to incorporate this latent heat of vaporization in the simulation <coughs> this nonlinear behavior uh, nonlinear with uh, thermophysical properties 
changing its phase and temperature is also one of the changing part <coughs> and of course if uh, the mixing is also one of the important parameters and this uh, mixing is determined by leakage rate screw speed and screw geometry and fluid rheology so these are the challenging part in the simulation next slide please so if you uh, study uh, if you calculate this uh, shear stress value of shear stress uh, for different uh, shear rate or we can call it a velocity gradient so change in velocity with respect to this uh, perpendicular distance dy so dy dy v and this is shear rate local shear rate or which has a unit of 1 by second or second inverse so in case of this uh, newtonian fluid the shear rate and shear stress is almost uh, linear and so this uh, general relationship between uh, shear uh, stress and velocity gradient tau is equal to mu d by dy by d4 and plus b so this n is the uh, uh, flow behavior index for different cryogens or different fluid this value will vary so present case this uh, for hydrogen it has a unit, uh, value of uh, 0.5 So this uh, and uh, mu is the uh, uh, viscosity of the fluid, and b is uh, this uh, intersection part at y axis, as shown in figure. So, so based on type of fluid, such as the time independent fluids, we can define uh, Newton fluid or non Newton fluid. So Newton fluid, which is air, water, and light oil. And uh, non Newton food such as being them plastic, cigarette, sludge, drilling mud. So, next slide, please. So, in case of uh, a non Newton food behavior, so non Newton food behavior, if you focus on the, the, on the curve, uh, Rate of shear stress and shear rate is non-linear. Uh, so this, uh, if you arrange, rearrange the this uh, shear stress, viscosity, and uh, this uh, velocity gradient term for local shear rate, so uh, mu is equal to shear stress divided by this local shear rate, which is called as an apparent viscosity, it is not constant at a given temperature and pressure. And it depends on this uh, different flow conditions, such as shear rate and the flow geometry. And of course, some sometimes even on the kinematic history of this fluid element under considerations. Next slide, please. <coughs> so, in in case of this single square studer, the first uh, cryogenic uh, Single square fluid system used for pellet production was designed by Wiener in 1997. The screw, which has the screw diameter of 12 mm and which is also 12 mm, and length of this uh, barrel is uh, along 150, 150 mm, which is uh, yeah, equivalent to our, our palm. And this is uh, this uh, single square system was designed uh, to study the uh, solid cryogens, uh, solid hydrogen at cryogenic conditions. So, uh, Vinier in 1997 found that uh, through this, uh, from his uh, study, he claimed that it produced uh, uh, 60 mm cube per second of throughput 
for more than 30 minutes. <clears throat> Next slide, please. And, and he calculate the extrusion velocity in millimeter per second at different temperature. Similarly, he found that as the screw rotation speed increases, this extrusion velocity also increases up to certain limit. Say at 20 RPM is a is a maximum uh, maximum uh, explosion velocity and then it decreases. So stable operation he was claimed that 15 RPM is a stable conditions and parallel temperature of 10 to 11 Kelvin. But in uh, stalling is a main problem in this uh, single square extruder system. And, uh, and this stalling of extrusion at high screw uh, speed was uh, presumed to be high from high heat generation due to this high uh, shear rate of solid hydrogen in the barrel. Because uh, as the screw rotation speed this, uh, increases and uh, <coughs> the shear rate the um, uh, sharing action between the screws between the material mat uh, inner diameter of the barrel and screw surfaces are higher. So the viscous dissipation will be higher or heat generation will be higher. <coughs> Next slide please. So <coughs> So an article model of the extruder system. So in this diagram, we can see that there are different gap is there between this between the two uh, screws which are in intermeshing positions. And uh, the relationship between the C chamber volume, the screw rotation speed and uh, start of this screw, which is denoted by small m, uh, denoted by this uh, expression q theoretical is equal to 2 times start into screw rotation speed into uh, volume of C chamber. <clears throat> so this, this is my uh, throughput when there is no loss is there. So this is maximum possible throughput. Which may be obtained for this extrusion system, particular extruder system. <clears throat> but if you uh, subtract this uh, leakages in the uh, which is uh, percent in the system, like flight gap leakage, side gap, side gap leakage, and tetrad and, and cylinder leakage, and we have to subtract this from the maximum possible throughput. So you'll get actual throughput, which is given by this expression. Next slide, please. <coughs> Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide. <coughs> so, what are the objective? So, with the help of this uh, uh, simulation, we can predict the pumping behavior of the extruder system. And this pumping behavior, we can predict with the help of the catalytic curve. And with the help of this uh, catalytic curve, we can predict the effectiveness of a hydro extruder system. 
second uh, objectives with the help of this uh, uh, simulation results we can predict the operating point at various temperature of hydrogen at 10 to 13 kelvin at some constant rpm third one to study the operating point and viscous dissipation rate for different exploitation speed say 5 to 20 rpm at 13 kelvin <laughs> next slide please so there are some assumptions in the in the analysis so here we are assuming as we are assuming that the hydrogen enters it and enters the extruder in solid form at constant uh, temperature isothermal conditions and melting of hydrogen does not occur due to viscous heating or the hydrogen is, remains as a solid throughout the extrusion system these are my two assumptions in the investigations next slide please So this is the uh, dimension of the screws, and uh, these are different parameters which is shown in this uh, diagram. L is not the pitch of the screw. B is the width of the one screw thread, and the calendar gap denoted by this sigma. Psi is equal to zero. Psi denotes the flat angle. Next slide, please. So this is our computation domain and bonding condition for the student dye system. So <coughs> here we define the whole computation domain in three sub domain: sub domain one, sub domain two, and sub domain three. And this is our barrel. The uh, inlet and out inlet inflow we are defining as inflow at the inlet of the system and out at the outlet side. Here we are um, for uh, left and right uh, and screw we are imposing Cartesian velocity. Similarly, at outlet of the barrel we define the normal and tangential velocity. Import. As a flow boundary condition. Similarly, <coughs> for die inflow and outflow boundary condition, we define as a flow boundary condition. And next slide, please. Next slide, please. <coughs> so, this is my uh, applied boundary conditions. So here, uh, we we have defined the different types of uh, boundary, inlet boundary, outlet boundary, wall boundary, for the extruder assembly for the inlet, outlet, and wall. So at the uh, outlet of the extruder system, <coughs> we define tangential velocity and normal velocity. The tangential velocity and normal force import. So Vs and Fn is equal to zero. <coughs> Similarly, for inner surface of the barrel, uh, for right screw and left screw, we define uh, Cartesian velocity and uh, positive uh, screw rotation and then uh, negative screw rotation for left and right screw. Next slide, please. So these are some uh, some fundamental calculations. Here, so alpha denotes the angle of this overlap area. Uh, v1, v2, and v3 denoted by this uh, volume of one barrel half over one pitch length, volume of one screw roots over one pitch length, and uh, v3 is equal to volume of one screw flight respectively, which is given by v1, v2, and v3. And this is V, the total volume of one chamber divided by V1 minus V2 minus M V3 by divided by M. So if the, the number of start is 1, we can again simplify this uh, total volume of chamber 
capital B is equal to V1 minus V2 minus V3. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, this uh, tau is equal to tau 0. This tau is equal to uh, tau 0 plus A1 into gamma e power n. This is a fundamental uh, uh, relationship for non trend fluid, there, which is expressed by is some empirical constant A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and A6. Gamma tend to denote the local shear rate, and N denote the uh, flow behavior index. This is a, a empirical fit which is developed by Lichman in 2010. This expression we have, he got this expression with the help of Scott Viscometer. He calculated this uh, uh, empirical uh, relationship between uh, temperature, operating temperature T and Tm is denoted a, a melting point temperature or critical temperature for different cryogens. This is a different uh, correlation for different uh, cryogens like uh, neon. Tritium, hydrogen, and, and deuterium with the help of this Scott viscometer. And he calculated the, uh, the explosion efficiency, which is defined by fluid power divided by total input power. So delta P into Q divided by uh, torque into <coughs> omega. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, for non Newtonian uh, behavior, there are different laws. There are power law, fluid, power law, then Herschel Bernstein law, Bingham, Bingham law for Bingham fluid. So, here we are using uh, Herschel Bernstein law, which is expressed by this uh, uh, relationship. And this fact one and fact two, we have, cal we have calculated for different temperatures, say 10 to 13 Kelvin. <clears throat> and the values of these uh, uh, factors and G critical related by this table. And next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. <coughs> so in mass energy uh, analysis, we so in every CFD simulation, uh, we have to uh, study this uh, in grid independence analysis. So the grid independence tests have been uh, performed for different different mesh size. So number of nodes in this field is around. Uh, 34,000 and the number of uh, meshes in the blue domain is almost 6 million and we have observed that the percentage difference of pressure between 5 million and 6 million element was uh, around 3 percent so we have selected this uh, mesh size for the investigations and, and this uh, the usual time required for simulation is about three hours with two HPC pack and with the help of this Anthea cluster. Next slide, please. So, um, so for first we have to uh, validate the model. With the help of uh, Comparison with the model available in the literature. So we have uh, we have calculated pressure developed for different different throughput. So as the throughput uh, increases, the pressure development in the extruder is uh, reduces. 
extremely dying for pressure drop in the dye uh, increases as the throughput increases. So the intersection of these two points uh, represent the um, operating point. So this uh, these two and these two uh, uh, comparative investigation has been performed for different uh, clearance gap. So from this diagram, we, it is clear that the operating point is highly dependent on the flight gap as well as the geometry of the tie. It also so if you if you change the geometry, this operating point will change. So in this diagram, we can say that at lower throughput, the hydrogen compression um, inside the of the extruder system is very high. As the throughput increases, the viscous drag it reduces. The flow drag reduces. So compression induced by the extruder system is reduces at higher throughput. Next slide, please. <coughs> so this is a pressure profile. So if you see this diagram, you can see that along the extrusion length, the pressure profile is is like a staircase arrangement. So at the flight of the screw, the pressure development is high compared to this root of the screw. Next slide, please. So this local shear rate behavior. So in this diagram, you can see that along the extrusion length, and the local shear rate will change and, and we have a, we have found that certain peak and valley like a uh, catastrophic curve for the hydrogen extrusion so how this local shear rate change so we have observed that at the flight of the screw at flight gap the <coughs> The velocity change is significantly, and therefore this uh, velocity gradient uh, du by dy is is comparatively high as compared to root of the screw. So the local shear rate is high at the flight of the screw, and the root of the screw is low. So the value of this local shear rate is maximum in the region of this flight. And barrel. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> so this, uh, with the help of this control plot, we can we can uh, we can see that how the pressure development will change from from inlet to outlet side. So, come control have been added. Which uh, show the quantity measurement of this pressure throughout the uh, extrusion system. So, <laughs> at lower throughput, say uh, 200 mm cube per second. The pressure element is uh, around 331 bar, which is very, very high. Similarly, at a higher throughput, uh, let us say 550 mm per second, the pressure element is 90 bar. So, in the diagram, in, the, in this control part, we can see that at the outlet of the extruder, which is shown in red color, the pressure uh, is very high, and the blue color. Dark blue color, which shows that the pressure is low. So this is a, a pumping catalysis. It this show the pumping behavior of the extrusion system at cryogenic conditions. So in this control plot, we can see that 
from lower to if you go on lower to higher to 200 let us say 200 300 400 and 500 mm per second the pressure development change in pressure out outlet pressure minus inlet pressure will be reduces significantly next slide please so the, this is the variation of uh, local shear rate distribution with a different throughput if isothermal condition say certain kelvin so in this diagram you can see that at lower throughput 200 mm per second the shear rate in the range of 133 to 266 and lower side is at the root of the screw which is in the range of 0 to 133 second inverse at lower throughput as and as high throughput increases as the throughput increases the most uh, Private throughput is higher value and lower values are most constant. We are also clear in this our previous slides, uh, which is uh, shown on the on the on the how the uh, local shear rate will change along the extrusion with the help of this peak and valley graph. <coughs> Next slide, please. So <clears throat> this is the plastic component perpendicular to the screw axis. So uh, we create one point, one line on the surface of the root root surface of the screw and uh, find out the this velocity z velocity and velocity x velocity. So in this uh, graph, we can see that it. Uh, at the y axis and the value of y uh, 0.012 at 12 mm the velocity z is some value and at the at the middle of the uh, y let us say 15 mm 0.015 meter the velocity is Higher, which is in the range of uh, 0.025 to 0.0003 meter per second. This is due to the positive flow behavior. This is due slow. <coughs> Similarly, uh, if you concentrate on this uh, velocity axis, so it uh, it y is equal to 0.017 mm. Sorry, meter. The velocity x velocity is zero, and so this y, uh, the and this is due to the no slip boundary conditions, no slip boundary conditions which are imposed at the barrel wall and root surface of this screw. So in no slip condition, at no slip condition, the uh, mean velocity. Our normal velocity is zero, so v x and v y is equal to zero at no slip conditions. So at the lower y, the velocity x is in the range of zero point zero two five meter per second. Next slide, please. So this is a validation of the present uh, investigations. So this is a family of the uh, pressure development curve, which is calculated for different uh, is calculated for different uh, um, temperature, which is constant for particular uh, investigations. Say 10 Kelvin, 11 Kelvin, 12 and 13 Kelvin. 
or not nutrient fluid similarly for nutrient fluid so this is a family of the curve so in this if you compare this uh, uh, different curve we can see that uh, for non nutrient fluid for constant plaque gap say at 0.25 mm uh, for the non nutrient fluid the pressure development is very low which is in the range of 0 to uh, 500 bar as the throughput increases say 550 mm cube per second this pressure development in going towards zero almost zero not exactly zero similarly if you compare for a, a newtonian fluid if you consider as a newtonian fluid then it will be very high very very high in the range of 4500 4, 4, bar which is very high <coughs> Similarly, if you uh, if you if you see or uh, concentrate on time and compare the result of CFD and radical, there is some deviation is there because in the, because the consideration of <coughs> because in 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 radical investigation we have we have considered nutrient behavior and CFD we have considered non nutrient behavior of the fluid. Uh, is, uh, therefore, the deviation is almost is very high if you compare this non-nutrient and nutrient behavior. Next slide, please. So this is the operating condition for the square to the system. So <coughs> in this diagram, you can see that. Uh, we have uh, we have considered dye which is 13 Kelvin, 12 Kelvin, 11 and 10 Kelvin at non non nutrient fluid. So the, we uh, so uh, if you change this uh, uh, temperature, change temperature, say 10 Kelvin. If you if you, if you take this uh, star uh, 10 Kelvin. Which is denoted by this symbol, star symbol. Uh, we have observed that the pressure drop in the die is high as compared to uh, 13 Kelvin. <coughs> because at 13 Kelvin, the hydrogen, uh, the shear stress, the shear strength of the this uh, uh, hydrogen is low as compared to um, 10 Kelvin. Similarly, uh, if you consider this uh, extruder behavior, uh, say 10 Kelvin, and this is in the range of, uh, this is very high for low to 200 mm per second, which is in the range of uh, 525 to 550 uh, bar. <coughs> so in, in 13 Kelvin, because as you know, the 13 Kelvin, the shear strength of the hydrogen is slow. So we have selected this 13 Kelvin and perform the analysis at different RPM, say 5 to 20 RPM. Uh, we get the family of this catalytic uh, curve. So the intersection of this die, the catalytic curve and the extruder catalytic curve, we get operating point. So likewise, we can change the operating point at different different temperature. Next slide, please. So this is a viscous dissipation uh, calculation. So in this diagram, we can see that at a uh, as the throughput increases, the viscous dissipation reduces. For constant RPM, <coughs> the reason behind as the throughput increases, the viscous drag reduces. So viscous drag reduces. 
similar trend have been observed for uh, different different uh, screw rotation speed say 15 10 and 5 rpm at constant temperature say 13 kelvin and if you if you to maintain the constant rpm and different uh, uh, temperature you will got different uh, uh, this could be situation at a different throughput the temperature in case of the material would bring down the viscosity and hence there is a dissipation rate <coughs> next slide please so based on our previous investigation <coughs> we can predict the operating throughput and operating pressure so in case of high rpm the <coughs> throughput will be 170 mm per second around with 34 bar and the throughput increases say 5 to 20 rpm the this operating throughput also increases and pressure and operating pressure also increases so there is <coughs> some special condition is there if you focus on the graph so if the maximum uh, maximum the two condition is there open discharge condition and closed discharge condition the first one is the when open discharge conditions when the uh, pressure is uh, throughput is maximum at zero bar when there is no die similarly in closed discharge conditions the operating throughput will be zero at maximum pressure development at the bar when the extruder is plugged <clears throat> so this is two of the special condition we have observed next slide please <coughs> next slide so <clears throat> and based on this previous calculation so we can calculate we can predict the viscous dissipation rate at different rpm so 5 rpm this is around 12 watt and as the viscous rpm increases say 5 to 20 rpm the viscous dissipation rate increases so 12 to 27 watt so an opening pressure also increases next slide please so uh, here we can summarize here so the local shear rate is maximum in the region of the slide and barrel and second observation is the, the throughput to pressure relationship is extremely um, dependent on the temperature of the hydrogen and the screw rotation speed So we have observed that as the screw rotation speed increases from 5 to 20 rpm, the maximum extrusion efficiency grows to 192 to 750 mm per second. As the screw rotation speed increases from 5 to 20 rpm, the operating point uh, will shift to around 700 mm per second. At the same time, the screw dissipation rate. Uh, increases drastically to seven thousand watt. Next slide, please. Thank you so much, sir, for such a novel and mind-blowing session. Before moving towards Q and A round, I would like to inform all the participants. that immediately after this session we will go for e test and feedback round now i would like to ask participants if they have any queries they can ask or can write it on chat box
सर देर इज वन क्वेश्चन देर इज वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम भव्य बेसरे मैम हाउ पैलेट वेलोसिटी एफेक्टेड द प्रोसेस सर एम आई ऑडिबल हेलो हेलो सर देर इज हाँ सर देर इज वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम भव्य बेस रे हाउ पैलेट वेलोसिटी एफेक्टेड द प्रोसेस इन पैलेट वेलोसिटी बेस्ड ऑन दिस डिफरेंट स्क्रू आरपीएम रोटेशन and that is uh, and the size of the die which will affect the pellet velocity and of course at the same time uh, this plasma density will also one of the important parameters uh, which will decide this pellet velocity plasma density and this uh, die configuration and its rotation speed of course so if you change if you change this shape of the die and geometry of the die the pressure development and corresponding this pressure drop sorry pressure drop and velocity will affect f2 some velocity will affect so this uh, uh, this uh, if you Means the plasma density is also one of the important uh, consideration to decide the pellet uh, velocity. Alongside, along with this uh, die configuration, this. Yes. Currently, uh, here we have discussed only mechanical side. This uh, physics is also uh, important inside the tokamak and prison reactors. Hello. Thank you so much, sir, for your answer. Uh, I think uh, if anyone want to ask any question, he can ask or write it on chat box. After a moment, we will proceed further. thank you so much sir uh, now moving forward now we have come to the end of this session we would like to convey our heartiest thanks to dr verma for such an exciting session this was a supreme paradigm of why this kind of interaction is crucial we are really thankful sir for enlightening us sir one last request hello thank you for inviting me fdp thank you so much sir so there's one request sir can we please share your ppt with our participants it will be beneficial for all the participants yes i can share the ppt uh, uh, i my email id is attached uh, or i will forward the email id uh, to mike sir and you can ask uh, i will uh, forward this ppt Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, the link for the e-test and feedback form has been updated in chat box as well as in the WhatsApp group of FDP. Participants can go through. program schedule has been updated in presentation screen also
after the session of e test and feedback we will go for our last session of fdp program that is validatory session